thank you all so much for being here at the end of what has been an amazing conference. I'm sure you're all exhausted, and we really appreciate you coming out. To the Upgoer 5 Challenge Fizz Amp Edition, which we're really, really excited about. Um, a really central question of communicating science to wider audiences often boils down to this. Can you take a complex scientific topic and explain it in a way that someone unfamiliar with the field can understand? The commonly cited techniques for meeting this challenge, like cutting out jargon and using relatable analogies, sound easy in principle, but are often quite tough in practice. Enter the Upgoer 5 challenge. It was actually inspired by a really brilliant XKCD comic that took the elimination of jargon to an almost absurd degree by explaining the blueprints of the Saturn V moon rocket using only the thousand most common words in the English language. Thousand isn't actually one of them, so it's the 10 hundred most common words <laughs> in the English language, and hence the name of this technique, Upgoer 5, after Saturn V moon rocket. <laughs> It is, and I quote, the only flying space car that has taken anyone to another world. <laughs> what the vast majority of the Upgoer 5 challenge results I've read um, from our contributors clearly show that if you seek to move beyond the straight replacement of forbidden words and actually recast the concept that you're trying to explain, something really profound can result. However, there are still rules, and here they are for all of you who are not familiar with this challenge. Each presentation will be five minute, minutes long. Um, presenters are only able to use English's 10 hundred most common words. Additional words, however, can be used on these slides, and presenters, please, don't use forbidden words in quotation marks. Um, we're going to save all of the questions until the end of the session where I'm going to invite all of the speakers up and basically open it up for a real quick discussion before we all head to the bar to celebrate science communication. Um, and I also would like to note that this session is being filmed. It's over here, so we're trying not to capture the audience, but just so everybody is aware. And a couple brief notes before we get started. Why does scientific communication matter? Well, for many, scientific research is, of course, the exclusive domain of scientists, and they don't really feel a personal connection of any kind to science. Face-to-face -face interactions between us as scientists and other audiences really are opportunities for improving awareness, understanding, and appreciation of current research and its application. And some might argue, myself among them, that it is our moral responsibility in the case where our scientific research is publicly funded to be able to explain what it is that we're doing with people's tax dollars. I think it's especially important right now, I, we're standing in the United States of America, I don't think I need to tell you guys um, that there is a war on science. Around half of Americans reject the facts of evolution. Fewer than a third agree there's a scientific consensus on human-caused climate change and the number who accept the importance of vaccines is steadily ticking downward. I think that science communication, particularly with physical anthropology, um, has a really, really important place. Of course, we're this insanely interdisciplinary field. I often don't understand when my functional morphology colleagues talk to me. I have no idea what they're saying most of the time. Um, as well, physical anthropology kind of requires an understanding of evolution and biological. Um, variation, it kind of places humans into the bigger biological continuum, and I think really, really importantly for us as instructors, um, in many, many cases, physical anthropology or biological anthropology is the only science credits that art students feel comfortable taking. So we have a really unique opportunity to do something there. As well, Why March for Science, AAPAs, um, this year have made it part of their mandate to foster open and honest scientific communication and inclusive public outreach. I do not know how to use a phone, but apparently Twitter is a thing. So try the Updoor Challenge yourself. Um, there's the internet link to it. And then go ahead and tweet your results using these two hashtags. And with 